Another one. I wish they, they realize that their insurance is expiring in 30 days. So I want they, whoever they is, to get a email that maybe looks something like this. Very professional looking. Very professional looking. Now this one has a little twist in it to some of the other ones I showed you. If you remember those other ones, they had column content. Okay, so they had different stuff about what I was looking at. This one actually embeds the output of a crystal report into the email. And then it also includes an attachment. So the attachment might be your policies pertaining to insurance. Okay. In this case, I just attached the word dot of our insurance department. Okay. Because if I send this to them, I might get the call, well, what are your requirements? Well, why don't I just give it to them? Take a little bit more proactive attack on that. So the concept here is find the cases where people's ins where a vendor's insurance is expiring and notify them. How many people have a clerk? that does that. Okay. Moving along, that clerk could do something else that's maybe a little bit more important to the company. Not that that's not important. It's huge. You gotta control your risk. But they can, this, a tool like this. Okay, another example. Now in this example, who is they? Vendors, okay? They had outstanding project documents and over budget jobs. So it might be something like this, and it runs through, and in this example, it's looking at RFIs. RFIs not return, return soon enough, okay? So these are RFIs that have been outstanding for you know, five or so days. Who is the they potentially in this example? Okay, could be PMs, okay? Think about it, out, open the walls of the company. Outside your company, it could be your upstream partner. If you're a sub and you're tracking RFIs and project management, it could be the GC. I've, I've sent this damn thing to them. It's two weeks. I got to order these materials. You know, help me here. Okay? Or it could be the architect and or engineer, your upstream partner, or it could be a project manager. Okay? So the day in this example could be a variety of people. Over budget jobs. Relatively simple. Now notice here, I'm going to kind of take this one and tear it apart a little bit. Um, when you build these alerts, you get to specify the conditions, cost codes over budget. And if you look at them all, total estimate is less than job to day case cost in all these cases. So that's the business alert or condition you're looking for. And then you can do math. And then down at the bottom, you can even include totals. Okay, so there's a variety of things you can do, and it might be cost over budget. How many people get, how many people deal with commitments? Subcontracts and per source. How many people get that little warning that says commitments are greater than the estimate? Okay, you can turn it on and off, but a lot of, a lot of people turn that on. Who knows about that? Think about that. Who, who, who gets that alert? AP clerk. AP clerk. Don't take this the wrong way, but the AP clerk might not have a clue what that means from a business perspective. Okay. Does the controller ever hear about it? Does the project management ever hear about it? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. But the, the alert is, is a good alert, but it potentially is targeted at the wrong person. So here, you know, this could be, and again, I just use this. This could be committed and estimate. Again, comparing two different types of numbers.